They call this place Martinville, Martinville, Missouri. And it's a pretty fair place to live. It's a town that grew up along the railroad. It took its time about doing it. And its people, by and large, are just people. Now, if you'd like to learn something about Martinville, talk to Ed Stevens. Ed will tell you this town is a truant piece of paradise. But then he beats the drum for the Chamber of Commerce. Today, Ed is in a different mood. This town won't get over it for a long time to come. Always was a kind of a soft touch. Probably he did a lot of good, all right, but everybody took advantage of him. <laughs> what did he have to show for it? Well, maybe soon. But I tell you, we all lost a lot when Henry passed on. They buried the best man in this town this morning. You know, he was a little too good to be true. But I always liked him. I never thought much about Henry. I always took him for granted. But since it happened, last few hours, I've begun to feel he was important. It's like I said, people in Martinville are just people. And being what they are, they usually discover how important a man is after he's gone. It's interesting that an important man could live in a plain little house like this. But this is Henry Wood's home. Let's go in. I know this family, know it well. I've been their minister for years. Folks hardly ever thought of Henry without Jenny, or of her without him. That's Jenny there. And that's Grandma Wood, Henry's mother. They're taking it well, like all of us expected they would. I'm not worried about them. Not about the son, Richard. It's the daughter, Mary. She's taking it pretty hard. I'm concerned about her. Oh, my dears. It was a shock. Such a terrible shock. Believe me, dear, I prayed to God to give you the strength to bear up under it. He was a saint. That's all one could say about him. A saint. Henry was a God-fearing man. Never missed a Sunday. Oh, he was a splendid example for us all. I feel so sorry for you. And dear little Mary. Oh, where is Mary? Oh, she's over there. Excuse me. Richard, Mary, I'm sure you both know how I... Yes, Mrs. Arthur, we understand. Thank you. Mary, your father was a wonderful man. He lived such a wonderful life. A wonderful life? Why? Why do you say it was a wonderful life? Mary. Well... I don't know what you mean. Who was his life wonderful for? Certainly not for him. Easy, Mary. He worked so hard. All his life he gave. And now, what's left? Yes, I'm concerned about Mary. She's facing a crisis in her own life. I've seen a lot of young people face. But for her, it's more sharply drawn by the death of her father. Richard, if there's anything I can do, just come to me. Thank you, sir. And my mind goes back at the sight of Harry Jenkins, back about 14 years to 1929. That was the time they called prosperity. Harry Jenkins was even wealthier than now. Owned a lot of interests. And one was the Jenkins Coal and Ice Company. Jenkins was more concerned with playing the stock market than attending to business. But now and then he would drop around to the yard to see his manager, Henry Wood. 
All right, Rudy, I have it. That's three tons. Henry, come here a minute, will you? Oh, hello, Harry. Glad you dropped in. How you been? Oh, I've been fine. I never saw you look better. Must be that new garden of yours. Garden has nothing to do with it. It's American Light and Power. Up 13 and 7 eighths today. Henry, why don't you get in on it? Look, I took a nap for an hour this morning. When I woke up, I was $500 richer. That's living. Charlie Moore tells me, and uh, he got it from a Kansas City banker, International Iron. It'll go to 200 and you can pick it up for a song. No, Harry. But you can buy this stuff on margin. It's a living cinch. Nothing is a living cinch but death and taxes. And the fact that whatever goes up must come down. Henry, the trouble with you is you won't take a chance. You'll never get ahead that way. Oh, yes, I do take chances. The chances I take are bigger. You mean you've been speculating? Henry, you're a rascal. No. The chances I take are not with securities, they're with people. Like with the fellow I met the other day. He was down on his luck a little. He'd been in China and Africa. Everywhere. Huh. Imagine actually working in in Peking or Bombay or, or the Congo, and getting to know these people, maybe helping them, actually working with them. <laughs> so, I took a chance on him, staked him a little. Sounds to me like you got stuck again. Well, maybe I did. But you see, I do take chances. On international characters. I'd rather take a chance on a thing like that than on international iron. Henry, can't figure you out. Never could. Well, I've got to get back to my, uh, my garden. <laughs> See what else has come up. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Almost forgot what I came in for. Henry, the yard's had a fine year. Never better. Christmas is coming and I'm giving you a bonus. Now, mm -hmm. don't thank me. You deserve it. $250. And if you're smart, you'll put it into international iron. Oh, no. Oh. Have it your own way. You know where you can reach me. It was the first, the last, the only bonus Henry ever received. Before then, business wasn't good enough. Thereafter, it was awful. Nearly as bad as American light and power or international iron. But everything that happened to the woods was a family affair. And the bonus, a family event. Everyone had an equal right to say what should be done with it. Bye. Daddy got a Christmas bonus. I forgot how much. Maybe $500. Hey, Mom! Mom! Daddy got a Christmas bonus. $5,500. Are you sure, Rich? That's what Mary said. Yeah, Mom. He just called up. <sighs> Henry was thinking of buying a new car. He began to feel sort of critical of the way his old one looked. Say, how about a lift, mister? Why, sure, friend. Hop in. Thanks. It was his custom to give people a ride. People he knew. Or strangers. It didn't matter. Johnson's the name, Mark Johnson, salesman. Topeka Pipe and Plumbing. Got a chance of 610 for Kansas City. Well, I'm Henry Wood. Glad to have you along, Mr. Johnson. I go right by the station. Say, Mr. Johnson, can you hear the knock on that motor? I believe I do. Say, tell me, does a 610 usually leave on time? Hasn't been late in four years. Is that a fact? Well, there's America for you. Yes, sir, what a great land we live in. Don't sell America short, I say. I don't suppose you travel much. No. But I sometimes wish I did. Well, you haven't missed a thing. Not a thing. Outside of the USA, there's nothing on earth worth shaking a stick at. Why, the way the rest of the world lives, it'd make you sick just to see it. No food, no decent places to live, and the plumbing, oh, brother, that's awful. 
You've seen a lot of the world, I suppose, Mr. Johnson. Been everywhere, everywhere from Topeka to Tientsin, but it don't mean a thing. Every country you see is just like the last, except maybe the people talk a different kind of gibberish. I tell you, Wood, most of the people in the world live like animals. No shoes, no soap. Why, they don't even have the things we Americans throw away, and they don't seem to care. I thank God twice a day I wasn't born a foreigner. No, sir. Whatever there is worth having, we've got it right here. Say, I believe I hear that knock more clearly now. Sounds like a baron's loose. Friendly sound, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I, I'm used to that now. I wouldn't feel comfortable driving along without it. That evening, in typical fashion, the family gathered to discuss Henry's bonus. How about a new car, Dad? No, son, not this year. But you always said that the car... Yes, I know. But I listened very carefully coming home tonight, to that knock, I mean, and I think that motor will stand up for another year. Henry, what will we do with the money? Well, I thought we should invest it. In what? Maybe foreign investments. Did you say you stopped at the pastor's tonight? Mm-hmm. I know what you want us to do, Henry Wood. You want us to give the whole thing to the church. No, Jenny, not all of it. Not all of it? Oh, but Henry, you need so many things for yourself. Besides, this is the first bonus you've ever had. Oh, foreign investment, indeed. Jenny. Do you realize that there are millions of people in this world living like animals? They don't even have the things that we Americans throw away. Besides, it is an investment. Goodness sakes, I don't know what to do with you. Oh, Dad. Did we give so much that there was never anything left? Why did we always have to give so much away? Hi, Dad. Hi, Rich. What kept you, dear? Oh, John Dennison. He stopped at the office about closing time. Had some business. John Dennison? Well, what did he sign you up for? Now, nah, Jenny. Treasurer of what? The Welfare Committee. Henry Wood, when are you going to learn to say no? <laughs> How about yourself? How many committees are you on? Well, I... Now, just don't change the subject. You've already pledged yourself to do more than a person can bear. Every member canvas, stewardship committee, chamber of commerce, parent teachers. Someone has to do these things. There's just no use talking to you, Henry. I guess folks in this town just know who to look for when they've got non-paying treasure ships to hand out. Beats me, you haven't taken on the Cat and Dog Association. Hi, Dad. Oh, hello, honey. Dad's treasurer again, Mary. The Welfare Committee. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Are they going to pay you for this one? No. Only the annual hospital drive pays me. And I give that money to your mother. That's how she gets her hats. <laughs> Gosh, Dad, why do they always make you treasure? Because your father is just about the only man in this town that everybody trusts with their money. Poor Dad. He did whatever he was asked to do. Almost like a... a servant. Pastor, we're going to miss him. Yes, Henry was a pretty important person in this community. He loved his church. He and Jenny never missed a Sunday. They'd go over the sermon, take it apart, and talk to me about it afterwards. And yet Henry never considered himself an especially religious man. He got a lot of real satisfaction out of life. And he loved his home, every inch of it. Took great pride in it especially the garden. He used to say that helping things to grow made him feel close to God. 
He did enjoy a lot of things, simple things. They were all he could afford. Just taking out the car and going for a ride. He was so gentle about everything until he got behind the wheel. <laughs> Henry, have you gone out of your mind? Oh, I can't understand why people don't pull over when you give them the horn. Give anyone a license that can add up to two. It must have been a woman. It was a man. Then he must be getting orders from the back seat. <laughs> That's what I mean. All that time, he helped us out on the annual hospital drive. There's just nobody else would be willing to do so much hard work, so well, year after year, for no pay. Did you say no pay, Mrs. Stevens? He never got a cent for being treasurer. Not in the 15 years he held a job. A wonderful man. Wonderful for the town. Uh, I mean, he was so sure about things. You wouldn't have thought it of Henry. He seemed so, so easygoing. But I know now he was strong. Stronger than any of us. We depended on him. It was like uh, during the Depression. This town was hard hit. None of us knew what to do. That's the situation, gentlemen. Things are in bad shape. Anybody any suggestions? Well, I have a suggestion. I think that now is the time to gamble on the future. Spend a little money, give a little time in order to attract new capital into Martinville. But Henry, you seem to forget. There's a depression. The only capital in the country is in Washington, D.C. Industry's busted everywhere. Nobody's putting up any plants. But you're wrong, Harry. There's still people with money and ambition looking for the right proposition. Give them the right sales talk and they'll become so interested they'll forget that they're in trouble. And you, Ed Stevens, don't tell me that you're not a good salesman. Didn't you sell me that bottom land in 1927? I mean the piece that's underwater six months a year? <laughs> Of course we can do it, and now is the time, while no other town around here has the foresight. We have a clear field. If we act now, we can attract new industry into Martinville. Look, there's nothing we can't do if we have faith and we work together. And he was right, too. That's how we got our shoe factory in Martinville. And our textile mill. Ed Stevens got the credit was elected president of the committee, had a testimonial dinner and a write-up in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Henry, oh, he wound up being treasurer. But Mary, would you fetch a cup of tea for Mrs. Erskine? Yes, Mother. Hardly limps at all. But there was a time when we thought Mary would never walk again. It was when Mary was at high school that something intruded on the life of this family. Something sharp, sudden, tragic. Dr. Warren was right. It's infantile paralysis. Oh, no. How bad is it? Very bad, Mr. Wood. Often these cases are... Oh, she has a chance to pull through, but uh, 
But what? She may never walk again. Well, if there's a chance, God will help us find her. If there's a chance, then she'll walk again. Oh, we'll see to it. Tell us what we should do. Well... And so the life of the family changed to meet the challenge. Nearly all that time, energy, money, went for Mary. There were examinations by a specialist in Kansas City. Baths at a special pool, expensive, but important if she were to regain the use of her legs. And there were braces, the best that money could buy. No sacrifice was too great. And they worked with her for hours each day, patiently, tenderly, teaching her once again how to walk, praying for the day when she could walk alone. I'll never forget Christmas Eve, 1938. Hello, Pastor. Hi, Richard. Hello, Jim. Hello, Pastor. Good evening, Grandma. Pastor. How are you, Henry? Very well, thank you, Pastor. Uh, son, take the pastor's hat and coat. Uh, how's Mary? She's fine. I I'll go and see her now. No, no. Wait. started down the stairs, alone, the first time since it happened. Merry Christmas. Oh, Lord, how can we thank you for all these blessings you have heaped upon us? You've provided us with more riches than a man can count. You've given us each other and the living presence of thy son. We know that if adversity comes, we can, with the help you provide, overcome it and rise above ourselves. Grant us that we may be what you would have us be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Even though Mary could walk, it was a long time before she could leave the house. And so the woods opened their house, and the young people of Martinville flocked there. I believe we sent more packages overseas than any other church in the state, even including the cities. Well, it was your doing, Mary. You organized it. No, it was because all you kids chipped in. You know, I think the town council's all wrong, voting down that playground. I went to see the mayor myself, I told him so. I told him I'd known him when he was a youngster, and I might be sure he'd have voted for it then. Well, what did he say, Mrs. Wood? Oh, <laughs> said he'd grown up since then. I came right back. I told him a person that forgets 
how to tell right from wrong hasn't grown up. He's grown small. Mary, you're going to the sleigh ride party with me, aren't you? Sweet of you to ask, Well, it's George, not but... sweet at all. I, I want you to come. I can't. Is there someone else you'd rather go with? No, of course there isn't. Why not, then? I just can't. Hey, George, come here a minute. All right, Mary, but I warn you. I'm going to keep on trying, and I'm not going to go with anyone else. Why don't you go, honey? It'll be good for you. Dad, you know I can't. Oh, honey, you can. You can do anything you really want to do. You can be anything that God wants you to be if you'll only have faith. Don't you ever forget that. Oh, George, it was wonderful. I'm sure glad you changed your mind about coming. So am I. You know, I was a little afraid to at first. Dad said I could do anything if I really wanted to. Well, sure you can. Well, good night, George. Good night. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Wood. Good evening, George. I, I, I was just, just leaving. Good, good night, Mary. Good night, George. Uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Wood. Mary, I, I'm glad you're going to college, but I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you, too. Of course, this way I'll have four years to, to get ahead and save while you're in school. And when you graduate... Yes? I'll open a place of my own on the outskirts of town to serve as farm equipment. Oh, I've got it all figured out. Oh. And after we're married, we'll, we'll build our house between the garage and the river. There's a spot about, about an acre on high ground. I've got to show you where it is before you leave. George, are you proposing to me? Hmm? Well, of course I am. That's what I thought. I never thought you'd ask me like this, between the garage and the river. I guess I'm a smooth, sophisticated type, all right. Oh, Mary, it'll be wonderful, won't it? Yes, it will. Mary, do you think it'll work out? I mean, four years isn't much time to, to get a start and make a place in the world. They say they've got too many mechanics in town as it is. And then there's the army. You'll do it. I know you will. You can be whatever you want to be. It just takes faith and hard work. We'll make it work out, together. Mary, I love you. I promise, one day we'll have our dream. Then Mary went to Teachers College. It wasn't easy for Mary. And for the family, it meant new sacrifices. She found it exciting but somewhat bewildering. You see, she'd been rather sheltered these past few years, grew up in our family's world, and took it to be the way of the whole world. In college, she was encouraged to think for herself. Things she'd been brought up to believe in were questioned here, or dismissed as old-fashioned. Thank you, Bob, but I couldn't go with you tomorrow. Why not? Tomorrow's Sunday, did you forget? <laughs> oh, so it's Sunday. Why can't you come? I'll be going to church. Oh, you really? Well, do you go to church every Sunday? Well, of course I do. Don't you? <laughs> well, I, I went a few times in my freshman year. I, I haven't gone at all this term. Fact is, 
I don't know why I went in the first place. Well, why do you go, Mary? Well, I don't know. It's like asking me, why do I breathe? I go because it's part of living. Because of the way it makes me feel. You know, Mary, you're very unusual. I guess that's why I like you. Now, let's forget all about church for tomorrow. We've got a picnic all arranged in a pretty spot. I'm sorry. Well, you're really serious, aren't you? Well, let's talk about something else, then. What are you studying? Public school music. My mother was a music teacher before she married. What are you studying? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. I keep changing around. Oh, I guess what I really want to learn is how to make 10,000 a year, and own my own home, afford a fur coat for my wife and a golf club for me, become a junior executive and a grade-A pillar of society. <laughs> now, when I've done that, well, then I'll go to church every Sunday. <laughs> What would it mean for George, for Richard, for our dreams and the hopes and plans of our generation? How could people like our father go on believing in goodness in a world like this? I'll send you all my medals. You keep the gold and silver ones, but don't bother about the bronze. Just throw those away. Oh, George, please be careful. I will, Mary. I'll write you every day. You write, too. You know I will. It'll make it all right out there. I'll write every day. I call my tank the, the Martinville Harvester. It makes me feel like I'm dealing with farm equipment. Oh, George, I'm afraid. If anything happened to you... Nothing I... will, Mary. I know it. And don't you worry about our future. It's postponed a bit, but only temporarily. We've got to have faith, Mary. We've just got to. Yes, not only Mary Wood, but our whole generation had a major adjustment to make. An adjustment to a new era in history, opening like an abyss at its feet. An era of wars, separations, fears and frustrations. An era that might last for the rest of their lives and would test their faith to the utmost. In Mary's senior year, Henry and Jenny came up to college for a visit. It's such a lovely place, dear. We're so happy for you. Must take a lot of money to run a place like this. You haven't seen anything yet. You just wait till tonight. We're having dinner in the dorm. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We won't be here tonight. We have to be home tonight. But, Dad, I... There's a very I'm... important committee meeting. And you're treasurer. That's right. It'd be bad enough if they ever paid you something for all the work you do for them. But, no, you'd never think of telling them you're too busy or too tired or... Well, Mary, I'm surprised at you. Well, look at you. Wearing that old hat. And Dad hasn't had a suit in years. I can't help it, Mother. It just isn't fair or right. But, Mary, didn't it ever strike you that this is what I want to do? It's my way of doing what I can to make the world a better place to live in. A better place to live in? What's better about it? Men all over the world killing each other. What makes you think there's, there's anything that you or anybody else can do to make it better? 
I hope this isn't what you've been learning here at college. I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that decent and honest people like you are, are taken advantage of. They're treated like servants. Why, Mary, what's come over you? Are you ill? No, I'm not ill. I'm just fed up with everything. I'm tired of seeing you and Dad skimping and scraping day after day. I'm quitting school, Mother. I'm going to get a job and see what I can do to help out. But, Mary, you can't do that. You always wanted to be a teacher. You can't quit now. We'll get along. We don't mind. Of course you don't mind. You never did. You've spent your life doing everything for others. What have you got to show for it? Well, I... have a wife I love very much. I have a son and a daughter I'm very proud of. I have friends. And I have people that depend upon me. We'll be late for our train if we don't hurry. Sorry, Dad. I just don't know what to say. That's all right, Mary. There was a time when you were so sick that your mother and I had a hard time holding on to our faith, too. But we learned that you can depend upon God to pull you through. And he depends on us, too. He's depending on you, Mary. Have faith. Do your work and finish your studies. There'll be plenty of time to talk about things like this later on. Goodbye, Mary. Bye. Goodbye, darling. All right, then. But there never was time to talk things over. Henry died a few days later in his sleep. And so you see why I'm concerned about Mary. She's looking back through her father's life for a key to the future. Searching for a new birth of faith. Faith in our father's way of life. Faith in herself and in a world that has crumbled. Mary, your father and I were at a meeting the night before he died. He said he'd had an experience recently that made him wonder if the church wasn't failing its young people. He proposed a plan to reorganize our program, improve our church, increase our giving. It was his own idea. He sold us on us, all of us. He said, our boys will be coming back one of these days. They'll be marrying and settling down. Our church has got to be ready to help them with our problems and to show them how to make this world a better place to live in. Tomorrow will come, and it's up to us to be ready for it. And Mary, we formed a committee. And your father was elected. Treasurer. Yes. That's the way he wanted it to be. something we'd like to say. Yes. Well, Ed and I have talked it over, and we thought we'd like to do something to show our appreciation for Henry. So, well, we'd like to be the first to give toward the program he presented the other night. And we'd like to call it the Henry Wood Fund. I don't know anything that would have pleased Henry more. Would you lead us in prayer?
Lord, we thank thee for Henry Wood. He's been a blessing to us all. We thank thee for thy plan, which we can see at work in this world. We thank thee for Christian homes, which pass on from generation to generation, from a man to his children, and to his children's children, faith and hope and love. Grant us that we may live as he lived, remembering always that whoever would be great among us must become a servant of all. Amen. Goodbye, Pastor. I know you'll look in on Mom and Grandma while I'm gone. Of course I will. Mom says she wants to start giving music lessons again. With Dad's insurance. And I'll be sending my allotment home, too. I think they'll get along. Of course they'll get along. They're that kind of people. Thank you, Pastor. For everything. I... I think I want to go back to school. I want to graduate next spring. Then, then maybe I could get a job teaching here in Martinville. I think that would be very good, my dear. Oh, and Pastor. Yes? Do you think the Henry Wood Fund could use a, a woman treasurer? Mm -hmm. 